Thank you for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. For all the supplies used in this video, please check the description box below. For this video, I started with a blue background and I used a variety of white, ultramarine blue, blue violet, and blue gray. I also used these sponges to help create a softer effect on the background and I used multiple layers until I was happy with the end result. Now I'm just starting by blocking in some of my main color shapes and values. I'm not worried about any detail at this point. I just want to get some color down so that I can get a better view of the picture. And also to save my sketch that I did using transfer paper. So you can see I'm just blocking in all of the darker tones at this point using a variety of different colors, a lot of the blue and blue-gray, and a little bit of the black. And I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about this piece, if I wanted it to be more impressionistic style or really um, super realistic. And I ended up opting for more realistic in the face of the chickens and then doing more impressionistic feathers. I didn't want the feathers to draw too much attention, so I opted just to keep more of the details in the face. And this painting goes through a lot of stages of not looking quite right and looking pretty rough. And that is normal when you're painting with acrylics and really any type of medium. It always goes through that ugly stage. You just have to stick with it and continue to build those layers over and over. Now when I go and I create these feather shapes, it would be the same concept if I was doing a pet portrait and creating fur. I'm gonna do multiple layers and multiple glazes, so I'll get it'll get to the point where it becomes, I'm putting straight white onto where the feathers are and then I glaze over with a mixture of a transparent color and lots of water to create a nice translucent glaze. Just continuing to block in all of the colors that I see, not really worried about any of the detail at this point. Just wanna get the general color patterns down and then I can build from there. I also use a variety of different brushes. I like these synthetic brushes and I'm really not picky on any of the brushes that I do use. I opt for cheaper because I am not a good brush mama and don't take very good care of my brushes. So the cheaper the better and I can just buy multiple when they go on sale and I have hundreds and hundreds of different brushes that I use. Uh, I just choose whatever feels right and whatever's working for me at the time. So here I'm working on the white chicken and as everybody knows, white is never really white. So I'm using any kind of white very sparingly, otherwise the chicken will just look very washed out. It needs definition, so I'm keeping some of the warmer tones in there. I also put in some blue and just to create some of the transitional shadow areas. You never want to paint something solid white. Use your white as your your last kind of punch of color or punch of highlight. And the same goes for black. Just use it very sparingly and it leaves a really good effect. If you overuse it, it will create a really dark effect and make your painting look overall very dark and flat. This reference photo is from Pixabay, so you're free to, I'll put that link in the description box below, you're free to use that. Just continuing to block in some of the color zones that I see. Not being, I'm being fairly loose with this. Um, the only thing that I am being careful of is to make sure that my beak and eye area and comb area are in the correct placement, which is why I like to sketch out the image onto the canvas after I've done the background and then just block in colors because it will allow me to save that sketch so I know exactly where I need to put things. Thank you. 
If you do try this tutorial, please use the hashtag, uh, hashtag Boz Art Tutorials. I would love to see what your results are. Make it your own rendition and do, you know, maybe do some, a different background. Or if you wanted to paint it exactly how I did, that would be fine too. I just want to see the results. I love seeing them. So I'm making sure I'm adding in some visual texture. There's not actual texture on the canvas when I paint. There's usually, it's a very flat surface when I paint, but I like to have this visual texture in there so that when I do the translucent glazes, that texture will show through and make it look like it's feathers without having to add all of that detail and paint each feather individually. And here I'm blocking in the feet and most of the time you would want to block in whatever they're standing on first. However, I didn't want to lose my sketch that I had done. So I went ahead and just loosely blocked in their feet and then you'll see I will paint, I will paint around the feet. And in the reference photo, they had done a, I believe it's like a concrete slab or block that they're standing on and I just thought that wasn't very fitting for the chickens so I eventually I made that into kind of a wood block that they're standing on. Just continuing to block everything in. I am stepping away from my reference photo occasionally so that I'm not, my view isn't obscured by all the details in the feather and I'm looking more for the color zones that I see. I'm just continuing to block in all of the values and the colors that I see. One thing to keep in mind is that values do all of the work and color takes all of the credit, meaning that value is what is going to create your three-dimensional shape onto a flat surface. But the first thing that the eye sees is the color. So getting those two things in harmony is what is going to create a very a very pleasing picture for your end result. So throughout my painting process, I am always adjusting my values. When I make something lighter, I try to make the next thing darker and just try to keep those in harmony. Paying close attention to my reference to spot where the lightest areas are and where the darkest areas are. And having your reference right beside your painting in the same scale is very useful. The only thing that you need to be careful of is that if your printer is, if you're printing a, a picture and having and placing it next to your painting, your printer is going to obscure some of the colors unless you have a really, really good printer. So keep that in mind because once you look at it on a desktop, it's going to look very different than the printed image. And at this point in the painting, I would call this kind of step one. Obviously the step one would be painting in your background, but when it comes to the actual subjects, this is step one. I'm, this is just the considered the blocking in stage. Not focused on the detail, adding minor texture in there, but really not focused on the detail. There are still some areas in the chickens that the background color is showing through and that's okay at this point. And usually when I finish the step one, which would be the base layer, when I finish that, I like to leave the painting and 
begins step two um, with the glazes and such on the next day and just kind of come at it with a fresh set of eyes. For me, that just works best. <clears throat> it takes me multiple hours to complete a painting, generally. And so staring at the same object over and over for hours and hours kind of plays tricks on your eyes. So stepping away uh, allows you to come at it with some fresh eyes and sometimes some new ideas. So now here I am blocking in the concrete slab and I was going to do it concrete until I got it blocked in and realized it's just not, I think that wood would look much better in this scenario. So now this is day two after I have completed all of the block in and now I'm going in with a smaller brush working on some of the details around the eye and the beak area, adjusting my values once again and adjusting my colors. Now you'll see I'm putting, starting to put in more of the pure white in some areas and this is what you do if you're gonna glaze. So I wanted to make sure I have those feathers that I want to be more vibrant. I have those covered in a nice layer of the white. That allows me to go over it with glaze and keep the value correct, but change the color. So here I'm creating an illusion of feathers and I did that with a filbert brush and you can see I'm going in with straight white and adding that in. And I, the only thing that I was concerned about is the direction of the feathers that I was placing it. Just like you do on a pet portrait, you wanna make sure that your direction, your stroke is how the actual feather would grow. That creates the form of the chicken, or if you were doing a pet portrait, the form of the animal. So now I'm going in and I'm glazing with some translucent color. This kind of really makes the the feathers pop in certain areas and I do the do that multiple times so you'll see I'm going back in with more white now and I'm creating multiple glazes you just want to make sure that whatever you're putting the white on the paint underneath is dry so once you put this white on you want to let it sit and dry before you go on with your glaze I do the same thing with the comb area, adding in pure white so that I can glaze over the top of that. And I'm constantly adding in more darks to keep my values in check. I don't want to cover the whole thing in white. I just want to pick out certain areas and glaze over those, but sometimes you get a little overzealous with some of the white, so I need to go back in and adjust my deeper values. And I painted in the feet fairly loosely, even in the end result, I wasn't too concerned with the detail. I didn't want the focus to be on the feet. Like I said, I wanted the focus to be on the face of the chicken because that's where their personality is. just going in and making sure that their comb shape is correct kind of readjusting some areas in that Now 
Now I'm just softening up some of the feather area. It had a little bit too much definition from the prior glaze. So I'm going in with a little bit more of an opaque color, not white. Um, it is a more of a yellow and just kind of softening up some of those transition areas. And for this one, I'm just making sure that I am adding in lots of warm tones in the shadow areas. And just so that I can tie in the background a little bit more, I did add some blue into the feathers as well. really punching up those gold tones now. I didn't want these golden birds to appear too white because it, I wanted that white bird to really stand out. So now I'm punching up some of those golds to bring to tie all that in. And the two birds on the end are very similar in color, but I did want to make them a little bit different. And you'll see the end result there. They look like they might be the same bird, same um, breed of bird, but I wanted their coloring to be just a little different. I do plan on doing more full real-time tutorials once um, my children go back to school with all this whole coronavirus thing. They've been out of school so I haven't been able to do a real-time tutorial uh, because of the noise factor with children and usually it's nice to do that with a quiet house. So once they go back I do plan on doing some longer more in-depth real-time tutorials and some lives tutorials as well. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and that way you'll be notified. You can also click the bell button. You'll be notified of any of the uploads that I do in the future. And this painting will be available on my Etsy shop. You can also, and that link will be in the description box below. You can also contact me through Facebook or Instagram if you're interested in purchasing this original acrylic painting. So here you can see it's gonna start going into the ugly stage and this is laying the base down for some glazing that I'm gonna be doing. I really wanted to add some vibrancy to those comb areas and the skin underneath their beak so in order to get that vibrant kind of orange red color, I really needed to punch that color up with some white first so that I can glaze over the top of that.
and I'm really just using kind of a stippling method when I am adding this texture to the comb area. I'm not painting in each individual line or skin wrinkle or anything like that. I'm just using little dots, kind of being more sporadic with it. Here I am adjusting my darks again, making sure that I have things dark enough and my lights light enough. I'm really just jumping all over the painting right now, just trying to pick out what details I want to include and what areas I want to be more softer. And I know that some of the areas, the edges of the feathers, I do want to detail those a little bit more. That's why around the leg area, any of the long feathers, I'm kind of putting in a little bit more highlight in those areas. So now I'm glazing and you can see how much more vibrant and realistic those combs in the skin area underneath the beak becomes. Generally around a chicken's eye, it's very pink in color, sometimes red. So I carry some of that over the color that I use on the combs. I carry some of that over the eye area. And if it doesn't become bright enough for you or punchy enough for you, do another layer of glaze. Let this dry, add some more white, and then do another layer on top of that. So now I'm starting to detail some of the feet. Like I said before, I'm really not concerned with making massive detail. I just want the general shape and the values to be correct in the feet. That wasn't what I wanted the focus to be on this painting. Thank you. 
so now I'm gonna start working on the wood making sure that I keep the lighter va values towards the front towards that edge paying attention to the direction of the light I also wanted to include some of the blue background color towards the back edge of the block And that front area is fairly dark. And I am doing horizontal strokes just to give the illusion that there is texture in the wood there. If you did want to make this into the concrete, like in the reference photo, my original plan was to use a sponge to kind of create that texture in, um, in the concrete. So I would su suggest using a natural sponge for that. So here I am punching up some of the highlight areas. This is kind of the final step. So now I decided that the background needed a little bit more motion to it. So I'm using a splattering technique, using a very stiff brush with a lot of watered down paint using a lot of um, some deeper values and lighter values and it just kind of gives it a nice splatter. I'm trying to not get it on the chickens and wiping it off if I do. I hope that you guys enjoyed this acrylic painting tutorial. I will be doing some more. If there's a specific subject that you would like to see, please let me know. And like I said, I will be doing some more real-time tutorials once um, school is back open and I definitely look forward to that. It's much easier to do a real-time tutorial and explain everything step by step than it is to do a voiceover and to purchase this painting please visit my Etsy site located in the description box below as well as my social media links And thank you all for watching.